Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you how I fit my 12 inch butt weld on test day. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a pipeline welder for about seven years now. And here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. All right, so there's several different ways to fit up a weld, depending on, you know, what you're doing, what the situation is. But I'm gonna show you how I do it here on on test day, not here on test day, I'm not testing today, but this is something that I do because you never know where you're gonna end up testing. You know, they these pipeline companies, they, they find a yard. Sometimes it feels like out in the middle of nowhere, you might be in a shop, very rarely are you in a shop, it's usually outside. Sometimes they have um, something covering you, uh, not very often, depends on the job. I normally put uh, my mud board up here on two jack stands, just to act as a little table here to set up my pieces and clean them up. A lot of times I'll actually put these on the ground because I feel like I have better leverage or angle with my grinder. Usually these pups are about nine inches, I believe, is what they normally cut them to. Some jobs you have to cut them yourself. But anyway, they usually want them about nine inches a piece, so these are not typical um, pups. So they'll be a little bit taller, so I'll actually put them on the ground. What that is, hard on your back, um, bad habit that I created a long time ago. Um, but if you can get used to cleaning them up up here, it'll save your back. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and uh, set them on top of each other and see where they live. All right, when it comes to your landing, you might be asking how much land am I putting on and how much space am I going to be taking? First of all, for those of you who do not know what a landing is, it is just a flat spot on the end of a piece of pipe. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just putting on a flat spot and anywhere from, I'm gonna say a 16th to a nickel or thicker. For those, those of you who have heard the term a nickel land, what we mean by that is the thickness of a nickel. And it's about a, I don't know, it's about perfect really, depending on what size of pipe you're welding on. But I'm actually putting on a little bit less than a nickel right here, about a 16th, and then I'm gonna take a little bit less than a 16th of a uh, space, but I'm also running a 1 8 bead rod. If you're going to be running a 532 bead rod, you might want a nickel or heavier and a nickel or more space. That is. A good rule of thumb but it all depends on how you weld how you were taught uh, how hot you're running how thick the pipe is that makes a difference too but just keep in mind the more landing you have the thicker your landing the more space you're most likely going to need so that's the rule of thumb on landings all right once I've got them all cleaned up I go ahead and find my seams and I mark them on the outside and the inside. You'll line up your seams, or this is what I do. Line up my seams and I put them on the top whenever I start welding, because you don't ever wanna pull a strap out of your out of your seam. It's just a good habit to put these, line them up and put them on the top on a test. Out in the field, they'll actually, like on pipe, you know, on new production, they'll actually put the seams at 10 and two on the top when they're laying pipe. But on test, on a test you line up your seams that way you don't pull a strap out of your seam very rarely will you pull a strap out of the top of your weld i have heard of a test where guys where a guy has made welders pull the straps out of the top but that is a very very rare 
thing that hardly ever ever happens so line up your seams get all the high low out on the inside I usually take my hand and I run it on the inside like this make sure all the high low out high low is out or even which means you just want it to be flush all the way around on the inside now once you get that pretty close or once I get that pretty close now I come down here and I look all the way around it and make sure it's jammed up all the way around go ahead and take y'all down here with me <laughs> so I got her lined up got the high low out for the most part for now and then I come down here and I take a gander you can see I got some daylight right here and it's touching all right here let's go around here and look so like right right here I got a wide spot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where it's touching or where the wide spot is whichever is less and I'll actually mark it something like like in this case I'll mark it from here on both pieces and I'll draw a line actually I need to draw it this way I'll draw I'll draw a line in the direction that where I need to sand so that way whenever I pull this whenever I remove this and I go to sand it I'll remember which side I need to like I don't want to sand on this I want to sand or grind over here I'll go ahead and come on around and in this situation it looks like it starts to open up right here so I'll draw it this way so it's jammed up right here so I want to sand this my landing down that way all these other areas close up the whole idea is obviously to get it to be jammed up all the way around that way your fit is even all the way around that is the goal here a lot of times guys with a lot of experience or that have been doing it for a long time something like this they may not worry about if it's an inspector they've tested for before or or they're just real slick with techniques they've learned over the years they won't worry about it but when it comes to you know just now starting and and being young and and you're trying to prove yourself and you just drove you know 20 hours to another state to take a test and your job depends on it i really encourage prep you know it's all in the prep especially on bigger pipe this kind of stuff is more and more important because there's more air in pipe that's bigger than 12 inch so um, it's just a good habit to make sure it fits super duper good so now remember whenever you pull it off and you sand it so i marked it from here to here i'm just going to sand it well that's going to make my landing right now i got about a 16th and i'm going to sand it it's going to make it a little bit heavier so you'll actually want to lay your bevel back just a touch to to thin that landing back down and make it all perfect so once you have it perfect for the sake of this video i'm going to go ahead and go to the next step which is putting my spacing bands in now i don't remember what thickness these are but these are my spacing bands for running a 1 8 bead it is less i'm pretty sure it's less than a 16th of an inch thick 20 or 22 gauge sheet metal if i remember right real thin way thinner than than what you would think for a 1 8 bead and uh a lot of guys whenever i first started welding pipe a lot of guys suggested like saw blades like for bit or uh, big band saw blades they would actually cut them down and sand the teeth off of them and that made a good spacing tool for for a lot of people so but anyway that's that's what i use is just more or less homemade um pieces of real thin metal for my spacing band all right <clears throat> let's put you all back in the holster up here so i can show you what i'm doing all right I'm going to line my seams back up after I've sanded it and got it fitting real good. Got my spacing bands in. And get all my high-low out. A little extra pro tip here is a lot of times you want to fit this up 
before you preheat it because on a lot of tests the inspector wants you to preheat it and it's a good idea it'll actually help your bead go better especially on pipe that's what some people call harder harder pipe or whatever we can get to that in another video but anyway you'll want to preheat your pipe before you tack it and uh so but with bare hands i like to not use gloves to feel the inside my high low but anyway that's just a little tip for the preheat situation you can do it with gloves like thinner gloves like this like tig gloves you can still feel it but anyway anyway so i line my seams up get all the high low out and then if you notice i put my spacing bands in this way and i'm going to tack it here and then i'm going to tack it on the back side but i'm going to tack it and then i'm going to readjust it's obviously going to pull this way a little bit i'm going to put about an inch and a half tack or so two inches yeah probably about two inch tack and then it's going to draw this way this spacing band is going to get stuck most likely so i'll pull my spacing bands out the reason i mentioned my spacing bands being this way is because used to i used to put my spacing bands in the other way I'd put them in this way and tack right here. Well, what I had was a, I'll just go ahead and show you so better explanation. So it would be like this and I would tack it. Well then this, this band was harder to get out. And I was on a job one time where a uh, superintendent come up while we were testing and he's a welder, been a welder for several years. And he said, why don't you put your spacing bands in this way? with all his years of experience he gave me this little tip and i absolutely loved it and i've been using it ever since so spacing bands in this way is a good helpful way what i do to prep for my tack let's go ahead and put a tack in Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know some of you are asking, wait, wait, wait. What do you have your machine set on to put in these tacks? So I'm gonna show you. On this, it's different for every machine, but on this SAE 300, it's a 2012 model, does have a con continuous like gear situation. You know, a lot of your older machines have gears. Well, this one is just continuous, but on this 12 inch 375 wall, I'm gonna put it on 150 and take you to my remote because it's set on remote right here if you can see that so 150 on the main i call that the main back yonder and you can't hardly read my remote i need a new face plate but that is 40 i'm going to try 40 and see what happens now let's tack it All right, so 
this is what we got. Noticed I just put my ground right here in between my mud board. Works good. We're gonna take that off. Pick this up, try to get a better view for you. Hmm, that's not a very good view, hold on. All right, so I've only got two tacks in it right now. Depending on the inspector and what they ask you to do, a lot of times, I don't know about a lot, but a lot of times you'll end up putting four tacks in it. But the nice thing, if you can get away with it and after some experience, the fit that I have right now, this side's just a touch wider and I could go ahead and put this up on a 45 or just lay it up um, flat depending on what the test is. Hit my tacks and then I could just start running this side first. Most likely what I would do is run this top quarter first and then jump over here and run this other quarter. And the reason I like doing such thing is because you don't have to tie into a tack on your sides. That's what's nice about doing this if they'll let you. But if they won't let you, you'll just have to practice. It's probably a good idea to practice running into your side tacks, but like the starts for side tacks, because it'll be like running into this on the side or this, depending on which one is where. Anyway, that is how I fit up my butt weld. One last thing I wanted to mention, depending on who you're going to test for, if you know who you're going to test for, um, like you've worked for them before or which is usually ideal and it helps or you know somebody that's there that can kind of give you an idea of what the testing situation is like as far as like what do they have there to test on but one thing that the guy that broke me out that gave me my first pipe job what he taught me was because you test out in seems like a field or out in the middle of nowhere or you just never know where you're going to be or what kind of material they have whenever you're testing what he taught me was to carry around a piece of like a piece of pipe or square tubing or cold drill anything roughly about four foot long and like two chunks of metal and what you do is so I've used my Hoosier pole before which I don't advise especially if you spend a lot of time working on your Hoosier pole but uh, what he what he done and what I did for my first few tests was you set your pipe and your jack stands and then you put a the pipes running through here on your jack stands and then you put a you know your chunk of metal here picture this tack it onto your pipe and tack it onto your your piece running through your pipe on both sides that way your where you're running your bead is lifted off the piece of pipe running through here and then tack it to your jack stands that way this is somewhat sturdy now on a lot of jobs where they're a little more prepared or uh, take more care of their welders I guess if you will they will actually set up a piece of pipe whatever size of pipe you're welding on like for welding on 12 inch they'll actually set up a piece of 12 inch like 20 foot long 15 anything that's a little more solid set it up in uh, skids and then you take this and you just tack it on the end of that pipe and another welder can actually do that at the other end and it's a lot more stable that way um, a lot more comfortable you got something to lean your arm on at least on that one side and you won't have of course you'll have nine inches here like I mentioned before but uh, but you can even tack it on the end of that piece of pipe at a 45, whatever the test is. Um, that's a lot nicer. So that's how I fit up my 12 inch bell hole. It's a very common test on pipeline work. 12 inch or whatever size of line the main line is. Like if it's a 36 inch line, a lot of times the test will be on a piece of 36 inch. But either way, that is how I do it. That's gonna be it for this video. My advice for the week and for this type of video is it's all in the prep. I believe that wholeheartedly and it's hard a lot of times, especially whenever you know, you're know you young and it's your first few tests, um, you're nervous, you feel pressured with time and all that stuff. I remember these feelings like it was yesterday and I still get them from time to time. You know, I, I feel rushed for whatever reason. Some tests, they do have timelines, but, but uh, even with a timeline, you can get a lot more done than you think just by being patient. It doesn't help whenever you got other guys testing around you that maybe you're are real quick it, that makes you feel pressured so there's a lot of pressure on test day but if you get anything out of this video it is remember that it's all in the prep so what I said about sanding it down to make it fit that is huge no matter what size of pipe if you can make it fit real good take your time and get it blacked out all the way around 
That way, whenever you space it, it's the same all the way around. But that is my advice for this week, is it's all in the prep. It's all in the prep. Prep it good, your bead goes good, your hot pass goes good, everything goes good from there on out. So, that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and remember, learn something every day.